Hey everybody, it's John, aka Smelly Telly, and I'm hanging out here in Evansville, Indiana at moremusicandmoreguitars.com. And today we're featuring a guitar that has a lot going on. So this is the Fender Brent Mason signature model. This is a model that Fender worked closely with to kind of, as closely as they can, kind of clone Brent 67 Tele, and we'll talk a little bit about that here in a little bit. Uh, if you don't know who Brent Mason is, so how do you, I explain this to somebody that doesn't really know much about Nashville and country music? He's the, it's arguably the most famous of the non-famous guitar players out of Nashville. That is, he's a session guitar player. He's played on thousands of hit songs over four or five decades. Uh, he is what you would call like an A-roll or a first call when it comes to the session guys in Nashville. He's worked with pretty much everybody. He's a phenomenal guitar player. He's won multiple awards, including um, Guitar Player of the Year awards. It's, uh, you know, it, it, any, any award that you can win as a guitar player, pretty much he's picked up. Fantastic player. He's been doing it a long time, highly respected by fans and his peers. So it absolutely makes sense that Fender would honor him by giving him, you know, making a signature model for him. Basically, this guitar is. It's based pretty heavily on his 67 Tele. Now, you can see there's a lot of other things going on. When he got the guitar, it was used. He actually went to a pawn shop with Don Kelly, who's another Nashville legend, and they picked up this, well, his 67 Tele and a Strat. I don't know the year. And what's funny is Brent walked out of there with the Strat and Don walked out with the Tele, and then sometime afterwards, they decided to trade. And so he ended up with this 67 tra uh, Tele that had been stripped down and painted with primer. So this is, the color of this is primer gray. If you're thinking it's not very pretty, it really, it isn't. <laughs> it's, it is basically, uh, it's auto primer. So, uh, though I think it's kind of charming in, in a sense that, you know, it's Brent Mason. People probably literally give him guitars to play and the, you know, his, his main telly is the one he always falls back on. So um, let's talk a little bit about the basics of it. You know, there, when it comes down to it, it is a telly. You've got a maple neck and fretboard and an ash body. Uh, you do have locking tuners, which is awesome. You know, that's a huge upgrade. The neck is based off of his 67, which I would call, I think they call it a medium C. It's not, it's a, like a thinner medium, I would say. It's not, not a, what I would think of as a, you know, a full C. So if you like super thick necks, it may seem a little thin. If you like super thin necks, it may seem a little bit, you know, it's kind of in the middle. It does have the 7.25 radius. So for some people, that's a sticking point. They like a flatter radius. For other people, it's perfect. And then for a lot of us, it's we don't really care. It's it is what it is, right? It does have the medium jumbo frets on it. And as far as the neck goes, it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. We get to the body, and again, I said it's just an ash body that's been painted with this primer gray for you know auto part type of thing. Um, and now we get into the electronics, and this is where things get a little bit different. You can see that we have a multitude of types of pickups and colors going on here. These are all Seymour Duncans, by the way. So this is a Seymour Duncan Mini Humbucker. This is the Seymour Duncan uh, Hot Stack uh, Strat Pickup. And this is a Seymour Duncan Vintage Stack Tele Pickup. So down here, you'll also notice most Tele's, you only have the two. You know, you have a volume and a tone. We've got three here, and we're gonna go into that for just a second, in a standard three-way. So, let's get into it. Now, first thing I got to point out is this push-pull pot right here. When it's pulled all the way up like this, it is just basic tele wiring. You've got a bridge and a neck. So, when you're all the way down, you get the bridge. In the middle, you get the bridge and the neck. And all the way up, you get the neck. So, let's go through some of those tones real quick. I'm going to start in the neck. Uh, Larry was very smitten with the mini humbuckers. He is a mini humbucker guy. He's got an old Les Paul that's got minis. So, um, he, do, he is a little bit biased towards that, but I cannot disagree. I do think they, they sound great on this guitar. And we're plugged into a Fender Tone Master Deluxe Reverb, by the way.
nice and full sound. And we'll go to the middle. So now we've got the mini humbucker and the telly together. <laughs> And then all the way down, you get that Seymour Duncan vintage, stacked vintage. So, of course, you get, you know, the telly sound. Okay, so now let's talk about what happens when we push the tone control all the way down. By the way, this does work as just a regular tone control. So all three of those positions, if you want just standard tele positions where you're only using the bridge in the neck, that's with the tone pot pulled all the way up. When we push it down, now we start using this middle pickup, which again is the Seymour Duncan uh, hot stacked, stacked hot, it's hot and it's in the middle. That kind of blends in with the other pickups. So right now, I'm on the neck position with, again, the tone pots all the way down. And what we can do is we can start bringing in the middle control here. That brings the volume up on this middle pickup. So that's with no middle pickup. And you can hear once it's all the way up, it's a little bit more stratty sounding all the way off, all the way up. It's a little bit darker, but what's cool is you can kind of get a lot of things in between. pretty awesome all right middle position this is where it's kind of crazy because it is all three pickups together and again if I take this middle control and I wind it all the way back you're basically then just getting your bridge and your neck pickup together it's definitely when you put in that middle pickup, it does darken things up a little bit. And then when we go all the way down here, now it's the middle pickup and the bridge pickup together. Now, wind it all the way down and then it's just the bridge pickup by itself get all the shades in between as you start to blend it in. And it is, it's very stratty, right? It's very position two on a strat. So essentially what you're getting is you could say six different sounds, though when you're using the blend knob, it's not necessarily infinite, but you can get a lot of shades there. So that's pretty cool. All right, so now we're going to get into what I think is the most unique feature on this guitar, and that is the Glazier B Bender. Okay, this could be a video all by itself. I'm going to start off by saying before today, I'd spent about three minutes with the B Bender, and then today, I got to goof on it for about 30 minutes, you know, annoying Larry for 30 minutes while he was setting everything up in here. So I am not an expert on this, as you're, you'll quickly find out. But I do understand it well enough because it's something I've researched a lot over the years. I understand it well enough to explain what it does and how you might possibly be able to use it. So first of all, what is a B-Bender? Well, it's this mechanism that's built into the guitar that uh, I'll just kind of show you. When I push down on the guitar strap, it bends your B string all by itself. Now the B bender was 
and actually invented the original one way, way back by a guy named Gene Parsons, who was a drummer who eventually ended up in the Birds. And he built one and installed it on a Telecaster that belonged to Clarence White. Clarence White was this bluegrass phenom who eventually ended up with an electric guitar. He played in the later version of the Birds and uh, the, the seminal album, The Sweethearts of the Rodeo, which is just absolutely incredible. Um, and a lot of the pedal steel stuff you're hearing on there, and they, do, they did have a pedal steel player, but a lot of those parts were actually his Telecaster with a B-Bender. What he wanted to be able to do was mimic the sounds of a pedal steel. If you don't know what a pedal steel is, well, it's that thing when you see a country band and it's like a guitar on top of a table or built into a table. There's usually at least eight strings, and the guy has a slide they call a bar, and yes, you can make different pitches by moving the bar, you know, this way and that way across the strings, up and down, but also they're using these um, foot pedals and the knee levers to change the pitch. So a lot of times you'll see these steel guys and they're staying in one spot, but they're getting all these notes and that comes from their pedals and their knee levers. And so to mimic that, Clarence had Gene build him this device. It's not this device, but a device where he could basically do the same thing on a guitar. So you pick a string and you don't have to do anything with your hand. You just press down on the guitar neck. Now, how would that benefit you? Well, I don't know. Let's get some sounds and I'll kind of demonstrate, you know, to the best of my very limited abilities and show you some of the ways that you can use it and how they would use it traditionally. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate how we attach the strap. This is the what the, the glazier bender looks like from the back. You're going to take your strap and as it would be like this, you're going to push this through just like that, pressing the button first and you push it through the hole and it's in place. So when you push, press down on the guitar, it pulls that lever up and, that, and the guitar goes up. You can adjust how far you want the bend to go right here with this wheel. So again, most traditionally, most people just have it set for a whole step. So. All right, how you would use it. So for instance, and I'm just gonna do some simple triads on, on the guitar and show you uh, the kind of sounds you can get and how you might use it. So for instance, if I was taking just like an A chord and I'm just playing a first inversion A, so a root, a third, and a five, if I press down, I'm adding that sixth. So you're getting this neat sound as I go from the E to the F sharp and back to the E without having to do anything. Now, yes, I could just use a finger to do that but then it doesn't sound like that pedal steel type of thing. If I use a different shape, for instance, um, I'm gonna go to a D, to the four chord here, and I've got a root, a three, and a five. If I play a second instead of a third, I can use the B bender to take that E up to the F sharp. And that's, again, it's a D. And then while I'm up here, bent, I can add my second finger and get a sus4. Which sounds pretty cool. That's um, probably as fancy as I'll get today. But let's go to the E chord, and I'm just going to take a second inversion E. So there's a 5, there's a root, there's a third. And I'm going to raise the E up to an F sharp, which would give you a 9 or a major 9. back to my A. And you could do the, the country lick everybody knows, right? But you can... Uh, <laughs> that's painful to do though right now. I will say this, if you're gonna get one of these, get a strap that's not slick <laughs> because every time I try to push down, the guitar slides on me. So you wanna get one that's got maybe a little bit of grip to it. Okay, so it doesn't have to be for major sounding stuff. You can do it with minor as well. There, I'm just going from an E minor to an E sus4. An A. And then a B7. And 
and then E, sorry. You have to also be careful because look what happens if I just barely in tune, not in tune. That's the other thing too, with B bender, you can actually adjust what's called the throw in two different ways. So you can adjust it <clears throat> so that maybe you don't want to go up a whole step with your B bender. You can adjust it so it could go up a half step. Now, if you get pretty comfortable with one, I would imagine you could still do a half step without, you know, instead of going all the way up. You would get used to it, I'm sure. And then down here, there's an adjustment for the tension of it. So some people like the throw, that's just the motion, the, the throw of it to be fairly tense, you know, um, so they have to work at it. And then others like a very light throw. So I, I would say the only problem with the light throw is if you got it too light, just the weight of the guitar could possibly pull, pull your second string out of tune. By the way, this piece down here can be flipped over if you'd rather have the mechanism work on a G string. So a G bender, you could do that as well. So traditionally, most people use a B bender. I think, um, I think Brad Paisley goes back and forth. I think he sometimes uses a B, sometimes a G. He's probably got some that has both on it, like Jimmy Oleander, uh, Oleander from Diamond Rio. He has a G and a B, which is beyond my limited abilities. But you get the sound of it, right? It's that pedal steel type of sound. What I would love to see is somebody come along and use one of these in a non-traditional way. I think this type of device could be used creatively. Some 17-year-old kid needs to get a B-bender and just absolutely change the world with coming up with stuff, new things that are not traditional country. Um, I think that I've actually seen uh, Cheryl Crow's guitar player, I think his name's Peter Stroud, he was playing slide with a B-bender and he was doing some really, really cool stuff with that as well. So pretty neat. You know, overall, this is a guitar that has a ton of features and a ton of sounds. And I'm glad because, yeah, Brent Mason deserves this. He deserves to have a guitar that has, that's very, I would say, um, I, the most versatile. I don't know about the most versatile, but it's pretty darn versatile. You know, I really dig it. Uh, I'm actually considering, again, for the hundredth time in the past 15 years, I'm considering sending off my telly and having Joe Glazer put a B-Bender on mine for me so that... Maybe in two years we could revisit it and I could do something a little bit more impressive. Anyway, this has been a lot of fun. I've had a lot of fun doing this today, even though I've been in here annoying Larry with all of these bendy types of sounds and everything. If you have any questions about this guitar or anything else, you know, feel free to jump onto the comments or you can call down here, talk to one of our sales associates, or you can contact us through the website, moreguitars.com. And we will do our best to get your questions answered, you know, as promptly as possible. Uh, my name is John. You can call me Smelly. I've had a great time. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in the next video.